Father, we thank you for our time together, and we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and kindness, and uh, like usual, we rely upon you to guide us and direct us, and Father, we just want to follow the cloud, and I'm glad that you know what you're doing, because I do not, and so we just um, wait upon you, and we go with the um, direction that you're giving us. Amen. So welcome, and uh, we have some new people here and some, I want to say old friends. Thank you. <laughs> friends that we've known for a long time, how about that? <laughs> and so, and some, some new, new visitors and guests, we welcome you. Um, sounds like we have a chihuahua barking. Oh, that fell, okay. Looks like I'm... Excuse me while we get untangled here. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, my, my, my microphone has... <laughs> this, is, this is to keep us not serious, I guess. Okay, we're together. Um, in 1989, I did my first deliverance as an American Baptist pastor. In 1991, uh, after I was invited to leave the church because the power of God kept on coming, even though we had asked for it to come. You see, when, when, uh, when God does what you ask, then you don't like it. And um, so then I, I left the church, and I started having physical reactions on my head and um, during those years, I, uh, from 89 to 91, I prayed for deliverance, and I really did not feel a thing um, most of the time. In 91, I started feeling demons and evil, and then I started feeling um, angels. And over a period now since 91, the Lord has continued to teach me how to discern different kinds of spiritual beings. Excuse me. Um, I had, uh, I, during this time, I've had major shifts in doing deliverance, and in, somewhere in the middle or late 1990s, I received a, uh, a phone call from a friend in North Pole, Alaska, not the North Pole, but the city of North Pole, which is outside of Fairbanks, and he said, uh, one day with one word, uh, well, no, I had been told this before by a prophet, that one day the Lord would cast out the demons with one word. I said, well, you can't do it that way because I have my chart, and I would put the names down. And then uh, somewhere, I think it was around 1996, 97, um, I received a phone call from a friend in North Pole, and he gave me Matthew chapter 8. And... Uh, and the verse was, I forget where it is, but he gave me the actual verse. And the verse says, with one word, Jesus cast them out. And he says, do you know what that means? And I said, I, th I think I do. And so I, I tried it. And as soon as I said, and I'm not going to say the word because then I started delivering on everybody. But, uh, but then I started feeling evil coming off people. And in those years, it would take up to three days. I could feel evil coming off somebody. And it absolutely exhausted me. I actually had to take aspirin because it, not to sleep at night because I could feel it all night coming off. Well, that continued for quite a while. And then somewhere, it must have been around 2007, when the ruler, revelation of the ruler, uh, I got the revelation of the rulers. And then I felt the evil coming off a different part of my head. And then 2010, I got the revelation of Melchizedek that I felt wrote the deliverance coming through Melchizedek. 
Uh, I guess just before 2010, I had the revelation of the star. Star. Yeah. So that, then I felt the, the deliverance going through the star like a black hole. So this has continued, and um, on the end of the world day, remember the end of the world? So, so I think we were all present at the end of the world, which was on December the 21st, uh, which was a non-event, but, but something shifted for me, and for the first time I felt something here in my head, and it took me about two or three weeks to realize that I felt the person of the Holy Spirit. And people have told me before that, you know, about some people have seen him not as this force, but as a person. And so I could feel the person of the Holy Spirit. And I went back, and that happened on December the 21st. So I'm not quite sure how that all ties into the end of the world, but there must be some tie-in. <clears throat> well, a week ago, um, Sunday... I was not in good place. I talked to, in fact, I would not talk to Raylene. Uh, I actually sent her an email. She contacted me by email and says, I'm not in a good place. I will not talk to you. And then I actually felt bad about that. And so uh, I, I talked to her and told her, I, I, I want to quit. I am finished. I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I'm tired. I'm tired of the warring. I'm tired of not sleeping at night. I'm just tired. And I wasn't sick and tired, I was just tired. And I think I talked to Jana, and she asked how I was, and I said, don't ask. Then I told her. I was more than happy to complain to her also. <laughs> and uh, that night, um, <clears throat> I, I felt Jesus come as the Son of Man. Now, this had, hap had happened to me um, previously on, on a few occasions. So... The only way I can describe it is I feel the saints over here. So I discern when we're with a cloud of witnesses, and I feel pressure right here. And uh, this happened for the first time in Libertyville, no, excuse me, in Wisconsin, uh, at uh, Pastor Patty Vlada's Mike's house. And I, I felt several saints come, and then I felt Jesus as the Son of Man come. And I felt like he lay, actually laid hands on us. <clears throat> and uh, in fact, for a long time, I, I, we kept the notes confidential. I would not talk about it because I wanted to you know, make sure that I was totally insane. Some people think I am totally insane. Um, oh, Justin, you're going to take notes. Thank you. Um, Bless his heart. Then I was praying for... Um, a friend of ours, um, she had come in for a ministry appointment, and she had said there's a being there, and, and she does deliverance ministry, and she said, uh, this being will not respond to the blood of Christ, will not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Savior. And, and I think, well, great, I just certainly don't know what to do about that. And so I had her go over and stand, and I realized that I was feeling a refrain. Um, so we have talked a little bit about be this before, but since some of you are new, uh, I'll review. Um, I believe now, and hey. we are taking a radical position at Aslan's place. But that's all right, I'm used to that. I believe that we were created before conception, uh, and we've taken a lot of people back to, be to the throne, and that our names there are the sons of God. That our created spirits are called sons of God. And then you go to Romans 8, it says all creation is waiting for us to understand who we are. Oh, the Lord really liked it when I said that. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Um, now, so, now I don't know if we were all created at one time, I had a, a friend who said uh, <clears throat> that the um, that phrase, the first shall be last, actually uh, applies to the first that were created as sons of God are now the last, last. ones on earth, Amen. which I thought is an interesting <clears throat> concept. I can't prove or disprove that. <clears throat> so collectively, <clears throat> we, are, we are all the sons of God. In 2010, Janet was with me. 
we went to New York and we were praying for a client there. And she went into an open vision and she saw the sons of God in heaven. Now, at that time, we did not understand what we think we understand now. Mm. Now, we call this discernment, training, and what? Exploration. Exploration. You see, we are, we are so used to coming and being told something and you'll write down, yeah. not understanding that maybe there's a, a, a place in the Christian church for exploring, knowing that we could be wrong. Mm -hmm. And we, we could be wrong. I've been wrong many times. Um, I, I'm an expert at being wrong. So, but we're, but, you know, every time I, I talk about this, everybody goes, yeah, I think that's true. And so I, I'm watching, I pay, see, I pay attention. To what I you, saw that too. I watched you, say, or oh, Duncan. You know, no one's done that yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> I hear you. So anyway, uh, this woman uh, started crying, and she said this was the original rebellion of God, and this broke God's heart. And they that, that, that said that these sons of God rebelled against God. Now, I, I can remember so clearly, Jana was sitting across the room, and Jana is a woman of the word, and I, I, and I respect your ability to know the word. And, and I was ta taught theologically and biblically. I preached the Bible. You know, so my, my, uh, my, now my computer is now processing this. I'm thinking, I don't know if I believe this. And so I, I'm kind of doing a uh, full disk search of everything that she's talking about. Saying, is this biblical? Is this biblical? Is this biblical? And I wasn't quite sure. I was looking at Jana, and she's going like this. And so we're processing this. <coughs> Well, since then, as, as the revelation has unfolded, um, this is like the ultimate conspiracy theory. And, I, and, I've, sh and I've shared this before that it, I enjoy watching television, I enjoy movies, and I read quite often when I'm on the plane, I read novels. And very, very often in storylines, you have <coughs> the bad guy caught. Now, this is like in the, you ever saw the 24, which are like addictive, you know, like, so addictive. <laughs> but in the 24, they'll catch the bad guy, and then he'll say this, or ding, she'll ding, say ding, this. Ding. This is bigger than you think. You do not know who you're really dealing with. And it's, and it's like there is this committee or this group that is behind the front guy. Right? That's familiar? So you look at Job chapter 1. Chapter one in fact, turn there. We're actually going somewhere with this, so be patient. And some of this I know is what we've already covered. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, or the actual translation is the adversary, also came among them. Now you go to chapter 2. Verse 1, again there was a day when the sons of God, and this is Ben, ben Elohim, the sons of God, Zero. came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. I actually contacted a, uh, a professor of Hebrew because I wanted to make sure I was not misstating, and I feel like she has supported what I'm saying, that the emphasis is on the sons of God and not on Satan. See? See? So the sons of God, so I, and I believe now, I don't know if this is all the sons of God or just the fallen sons of God. We're told in Deuteronomy that the Lord divided the land according to the numbers of the sons of God. And so it appears that, that we are assigned a particular place to live as the sons of God. Okay? Now, we know from Genesis chapter 6, and let's turn there. Wow. Genesis chapter 6, now this is another radical thing I'm believing, <coughs> and uh, right now we're very much alone in this, but you have to understand my journey, I, I was trained theologically as a Baptist, went to American Baptist Seminary, and then I got my doctorate, and so uh, I, I was trained in theology and to believe theology, and in theology, you have a, a, a system called angelology, which is a study of angels. And so anything that's good and spiritual and not God are angels. 
So they call everything angels. Well, I, I, I like to say you do not call every four-legged creature or animal a dog. You have cows and, and sheep and horses. And so why would you call everything angels? But they still, this, this, this is still done. And even people who very much teach on this and are far more of an expert than I am. But what happened to me is the Lord started teaching me, taught me how to discern demons first and angels. And then I think it was then cherubim and seraphim and elders and rulers. And I started to distinguish them on different parts of my head. And so, you know, as I would talk about them, there would be seers like Raylene or Jan or others. And uh, then they would see them. And we realized that what they were seeing, they were not angels, but they were elders or they were seraphim or cherubim, which is exactly what the Bible says. Yeah, I'm not making this up. The Bible's actually um, saying that. So now we come to Genesis chapter 6. And there's a reason why I just went off that little tangent. Genesis 6, 1, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God. Now, everybody who I've heard teach about this and write about this say they're angels. I don't think they're angels. I think they're the sons of God. Now, what they do is they go to the book of Enoch, which is not in the Bible, and they also go for supporting evidence to Jude and 2 Peter 2, I believe it is. And, and, and they look at the context, and they, they believe that those angels are the ones that did this. Now, there's, there's several things I can go off on a tangent about why I do not believe that's true anymore. But one key thing I just noticed is, is that it says that they are all trapped now and chained to be released at the last time. So if they are chained then, then how do they start affecting throughout the Old Testament? Because the, 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 the product of the sons of God made with daughters of men with a Nephilim. So let's read that. Genesis 6, 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took the wives for themselves of all, of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came and daughters of men, and they bore children to them. So the result of the sexual activity between these spirits, which I believe are the human spirits, and the daughters are the Nephilim. Now, I do not know, you know, hey. I don't want to be too graphic, but how do they get genitals? How do they do this? I, I have no clue. The Lord has not revealed that, but it's in the Word. So that part we have no trouble with, right? It's in the Word, so they're Nephilim. Now, the Nephilim die, right? So they're not walking on the earth now. So where did they go? Well, they, they were not breathed into by God and became a living soul, so they have no souls. All they are is spirit that have now combined with human flesh, and these beings die, and they go into the place of the dead. So this is Delhi describes who are the zombies or the walking dead. I think this also explains ghosts. Um, these are these are the fallen, the fallen sons of God. Now, if you look in in Proverbs chapter two, Proverbs chapter two. Yes, Dad, we're going someplace new tonight, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, Proverbs chapter 2, well, let me see if I can find it. Let's talk about the adulterer. Oh, I'm in chapter 3. Uh, you look at Proverbs 2.16. To deliver you from the immortal, immortal, not immortal, immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God, 
for her house, now this is the house of the adulterer, for her house leads down to death, and I believe that's Sheol, but look at this, and her paths to the dead. Now what has happened that our translators sometimes translate words to what they think it mean, they mean, but not what it says. And I believe that they actually, it goes down to the place of Sheol, and Sheol is, is the place of the dead, and her path hey. to the Rephraim, R-E-P-H-A-I-M. Now, we believe now the Rephraim are the spirits of the dead Nephilim. And you'll find them mentioned in many places, but you have to look up Rephraim. You cannot look up the way it's translated. You have to look up the Rephraim. And uh, I've done quite a bit of research on this, and it's absolutely amazing uh, that this all seems to tie together that the Rephraim are the spirits of those who, are, who have died who are the Nephilim. Okay, some of this, again, I've talked about uh, before, so I, some of this is going to be review. I was in the panhandle of Oklahoma many years ago, and uh, we were with some Native Americans and some Caucasians, and uh, the man, Native American man said, well, I'm going to tell you it's confidential. Now, this is many years ago. It's now in public. But then it was still confidential. He says, we have gone into caves in the panhandle and we have found writing that we know is not Native American. So here we have a Native American man who's telling us that uh, the Native Americans are not the First Nation people. Okay, so this is, this is dangerous information. Uh, so they predate, and so they took some archeologists down there and some linguists, and they determined that what was written on the caves was Phoenician. And actually, they were temples to Baal. Now, this is a shocking thing because that means that the United States was first dedicated to Baal. Now, I'm going to summarize. Uh, in Jeremiah, Baal is t tied to Molech. Hmm. Hmm. So, and Molech is, yeah. is the god that the children of Israel worship at the bottom of Mount Sinai, which means that they burned their hmm. babies hmm. in fire and actually dedicated themselves to Baal Molech. Welcome. Welcome. So I, come on in, you can sit over there, make yourself comfortable. I, um, Gee. I got a hold of a book called Divorcing Baal. I had seen the man speak, um, he's from Oklahoma, on Sid Roth, and so I owe the book Divorcing Baal. And it was a lot of the things that they had told me uh, mm. in that, that little church in Panhandle, Oklahoma. And uh, so most of it was just very interesting information. They talked about how they had actually um, gone and done a process of divorcing Baal, and they did it in Washington, D.C. And I, and I talked to a guy just a couple weeks ago, and he says that he was there when that was done, and an earthquake hit Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. I think within two days yeah. of when they did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting that it, it, it damaged the National Cathedral and the Washington Monument yes. and something else, I think. Anyway, so as I was reading the book, all of a sudden this little nugget came out. He said, Beelzebub, who was declared to be the prince of the demons is the Greek word for Baal in the Old Testament. I thought, oh my word. So Beelzebub is Baal, who is Molech, who we are told the tabernacle of Molech came out of Egypt. Molech is tied to Saturn, and Saturn is the same as Nimrod. So now all of a sudden we've gone, we're going all the way back through history to the Tower of Babel and to Nimrod. Mm -hmm. Then I, th I thought, I wonder what the word demon means. You know, I've been in deliverance now. 
And, and if you're in this field of ministry, you know there's, there's a debate, and the debate is between who are demons and who are the evil spirits, right? I don't know if you've heard this, but... And, and the debate is based on information in the book of Enoch. Now, I have enough trouble when I teach the Bible. You know, I get so much flack. Because I'll, I'll simply say, well, what does the Bible say? And you see, this is what they say. Well, it doesn't mean that. And I, I'm told that. Well, it doesn't mean that. I'm thinking, so what you're telling me is the Bible is the way you interpret it and not what it actually says. And so... I've actually had people who have criticized me, and they say, do not go up there because he believe, takes the Bible too literally. Okay, guilty. I am guilty as charged. <laughs> I, will, I take the Bible very literally. I believe the Bible. So I thought, well, I wonder what the word demon means. And so I looked up the definition. It means little gods. I thought, here we go. So Molech who I had already started believing was the leader of the fallen sons of God, is now the same as Baal, who is the same as Beelzebub, who is the prince of the demon. Starting to get it? So then I wonder, wow, what happens if a created son of God in heaven is given the gift of mercy? Then what happened when he fell? Then he became hate. Mm-hmm. And I started w- wondering if, if, if the demonic, which are these... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stop the oh. whole train of thought. Just, right. You said, like, demon mean little something. And little just, gods. Little gods. Little gods. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I hate hate. Okay. All right. Well... So let me get my train of thought again. That's all right, Brian. You need to help me clarify little things. Little gods and, and... Yeah, so it means little gods. And, and so these, these fallen sons of God. Now, if you go to, um, go to Psalm 82. Incidentally, when you start looking at Nimrod, who was a mighty one, and you, you, you look at the sons of God and the word mighty, gibberine, I think it's gibberine, it, it is tied to it. Look at this, Psalm 82. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among what? The gods. Incidentally, this explains the pantheon of gods in Egypt, in Greece, Rome. in Rome, the gods of Valhalla. Have anybody watching the Viking series on the History Channel? Yeah. You know, they're, it's all about Thor and Odin. Yeah. See, I think these are all the fallen sons of God. Um, you look at the Avengers, and you know, it's all about the gods, that movie, the Avengers. And then you have Thor. And you know, it's interesting that in light of what the revelation is coming down about the sons of God, that even Hollywood is picking up the channel. Right? Mm-hmm. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked, Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said you are gods. This is very troubling to people. It actually says, I say you are little Elohims. Now, what I did is I thought, well, I wonder what the sons of God are in Romans 8. So what you do is you take the Septuagint. and you, So the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. So I thought, well, I wonder what sons of God are in the Greek. It's the same, same. translation as sons of God in Romans 8. Amen. The same. So he says, I say you are gods, all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men. And they did, didn't they? And fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth. Isn't it interesting that the judgment is tied to the fallen sons of God on earth? Okay, now I want to go back 
to the lady who came in for ministry. So I walked over there, I had her walk over there, and when she stood there, I could discern that I was feeling a Rephraim, a fallen son of God, a walking dead. And I thought, I don't know what to do. You know, and this, and see, these, these beings are very arrogant. And I had this thought. I thought, I need to ask Jesus to come as the Son of Man with a sword and take care of this guy. And so we did that. And sure enough, she saw Jesus riding on a white oh, horse. He came with a sword, whoosh, and the guy's head went off. And I've talked to her many times since, and she's a totally different person. That's what I said. <laughs> <coughs> And then I started piecing things together. Why is it important for Jesus to come as the Son of Man? Mm. Why? Now you look at, uh, let's look at Matthew 16, 13. Okay, let's look at the, uh, we have 49 line. Justin, there's something in white flying in the shape of the symbol of infinity Ron Paul said part of the flight pattern is in front of his head and the other part goes behind his head. Justin, is it good? Well, maybe respond. Sonia, uh, all my, I was praying in my spirit for you, Paul. Oh, I don't know, I'll read all this. <laughs> all? Oh. Uh, so Sonia feels like there's celebration and warfare. I'll say that much, Sonia. Thank you, you are very kind, Sonia. Okay, um, Matthew sixteen thirteen. Uh, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, "Who do men say that I am? The, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am?" And you look at uh, John four twelve thirty four. John 12, 34. The people asked him, We have heard from the law that Christ re remains forever. And how can you say, The Son of Man must now be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said to him, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. And incidentally, we've often tied the term sons of light with the sons of God. Now if you look at the end of Matthew, and hopefully I can find it, um, Jesus is, um, is before his accusers, um, Okay, let's see if I can find it. Okay. Okay, the Son of Man is mentioned here. Does anybody when, see it? It's in Matthew 27. I left my Bible at home. I can never find okay. anything in someone else's Bible. Um, I'm going there. Jesus says, let me just quote it, and maybe someone can find it. Jesus says to his accuser, you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of the power. It's interesting, he does not say God, does not say the Father. He says, you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of the power. It's Matthew 26, Okay, thank you. So Matthew 26, I didn't go back for it. 26 what? 64. 64. Jesus said to him, It is as you said, nevertheless I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man seat, sitting at the right hand of the power. Isn't that interesting? And coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, he is the Son of God. But he's also the Son of Man. Now, I start putting some things together. So you have a fallen son of God who's mated with a 
human being, they be, the children, the child is a Nephilim. The Nephilim dies, goes to the place hey. of the dead. We are told in many places that like in adultery or other sinful activities, that parts of us, or it actually says our soul, goes into the place of the dead, goes into the place of Sheol. Now, I believe that what Scripture means here is the soul parts. This is like DID, that there's parts of us that go into those places. So then, so you have this, this fallen Rephraim, right? And he's there with these soul parts because of human, humanity's sin. Is it possible that he is now re-inhabiting other human beings? So this is the game that's being played. These sons of God can say, we also are sons of God. We have also come into flesh. We have also died. And we've also come back to life. So you are no different than we are. But there's a big difference. There are people today and some Christian leaders that are saying that Jesus did not actually die. And I believe this is heresy. Now, why is this important? He had to die as a man. Because if Jesus didn't die like anybody else, then he is no different than, us. than the fallen Nephilim. What? He had to actually physically die. Mm -hmm. And be good as good and dead, and for a Jew the third day. And incidentally, I heard someone else say, Well, we know that we don't have things quite right because Jesus was not in the grave three full days. Well, you're not very educated because you see, a Jew considered any part of a day a day. So you have the Friday, you have the Saturday, and you have the Sunday. That's three days. It's very simple. So he was in the grave three days, and he was good and dead. He is the only one whose hey. body is now resurrected. See, the Nephilim body is not resurrected. See the difference? And so now, because of the sacrifice and his conquering death, he went before the Father, went to the Holy of Holies, presented his blood on the mercy seat. as our propitiation, as it says in Romans. And he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And so when he comes as a son of man, nothing on earth, under the earth, or above the earth can declare that he is, does not have rights. In fact, in Hebrew it says that he went through all the heavens. That means he went through all the dimensions hey. declaring he is Lord. And he even says he went to the spirits that were where? In Sheol. And he, pro and he proclaimed. And the word is interesting. There is a, a word called evangelo, which means you proclaim with the hope of a decision. That's where we get evangelism from. He did not do that. No one gets saved in that proclamation of Jesus. He went and he declared, I am now victorious over you. And I am the Son of Man. I am the Son of God. I am a victorious over death, and I'm going to deal with you soon. Okay. Now, on last Sunday, so we can go Sunday, and today is um, April 16th. I was sitting uh, after being very, very low and very unhappy and Frankly, fed up. I did not want to do this anymore. I was tired. I was tired. I was tired of being tired. I want to be honest. I was tired of being tired. And all of a sudden, I felt Jesus as a Son of Man come. And He came, and all of a sudden, I had a, a, a sword in my hand. And I, I talked. To, I was on the phone with Raylene, actually, and, <clears throat> and I still have it. And it was this huge, this huge sword. Now, I want to say something very carefully that I am not declaring something. 
I'm just telling you what I heard. In fact, I did not hear it. I said it. I could be 100% wrong. Okay? But what I heard is the day of the Lord has begun. Hey. I heard that. And, and the day of the vengeance of our oh God. God. Amen, amen. And I, I started, I, I started, <laughs> I started declaring, and I had like this exhausted Whoa. anger rise up in me. But I am really tired of this, and and I felt like the Lord was is really angry. So the next day, I have prayer sessions, and um, which was a week ago, Monday. And in fact, a relative of the person I prayed for came today, and she reminded me uh, that it was her brother that I prayed for. And I realized that when I was praying that Jesus, as the Son of Man, was now doing the deliverance. And this was quite a shock. And and you have to understand, for me, this is a, because I feel this all in my head, and I get exhausted Gosh. when I, I pray for people because I feel it. It's like a moving headache. But it's like Jesus, personally, on that Monday, is now doing the deliverance. Now, it's always by his power that was being done. But it's like I was, I was really affected by it. And it's hard for me to explain, but it is like he is personally doing it. <laughs> so now, this week, something happened. If you turn to Daniel chapter 7, which is where the term the Son of Man is used in the Old Testament. Oh, Justin thinks it's good. That's good news. Samuel, um, can I also add to the conference, God sent a flood in Noah's time so that God could wipe out the Nephilim. That's right. And Deborah. Hi, Deborah. In the beginning, I saw a few beings surrounding Paul as he has been sharing this about Jesus. The cloud of witnesses grew very large and are in a huge crowd around him now. That's interesting. Thank you, Deborah. Deborah's in Hawaii we'll break off all envy and jealousy. <laughs> We'd love to be in Hawaii with you, Deborah. Love you, Deborah. Okay, let's start with... Um, would someone like to read um, chapter 7 and um, go to verse 14? So 1 through 14. Who would like to read that? We'll get you on the mic. Okay. Uh, get yourself on the mic. Make sure the mic is on. Should be down at the butt. Justine. Okay. That one's on. <laughs> the black one. I went to save somebody. That one's always on. It's always on. Okay. Okay, it looks like a whirlwind is forming in the center of the room. I feel that. Yeah. Now, Deborah does not know where I'm going. I just had a thought where I'm going in the last minute. So she certainly could know where I was going because I didn't know where I was going, but I think I know now. Okay, go ahead. Moving. Read that. <laughs> One, through One through 14. 14. Mm -hmm. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, mm. and visions passed through his mind as he was lying on his bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different yeah. from the others, came up out of the sea. The first was like a lion, and it had the wings of an eagle. I watched until its wings were torn off, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a man, and the heart of the man of a man was given to it. And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear, 
It was raised up on one of its sides, and it had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. It was told, Get up and eat your fill of flesh. After that I looked, and there before me was another beast, one that looked like a leopard, and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird. This beast had four heads, and it was given authority to rule. After that, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was a fourth beast, terrifying and frightening and very powerful. It had large iron teeth. It crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. It was different from all the former beasts, and it had ten horns. Oh. While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Now, I want to, <clears throat> let me make a comment here, okay? This is an important term because the Ancient of Days predates the creation of the sons of God. Amen. This is why it's ancient of the, this, this Ancient of Days term is important. Mm -hmm. He is the Ancient of Days, and he predates, if you, I know it's hard to talk about in terms of time, but he is before the creation of the sons of God. Okay, got it? All right, keep going. Where was that? His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain, and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. Mm. That's interesting. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man. So there's a son of man come before the Ancient of Days. Okay. Coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority. There it is. Glory and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Okay, now go to verse 26. But the court shall be seated... In fact, let's start back at um, 20, 23. Mm -hmm. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings, who shall arise from this, his, this kingdom, and others shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first one, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. In fact, um, persecute actually means he shall wear down. Wear down. Have you felt like that? Yes. 
and shall intend to change times and laws, then the saint shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and a half a time. But the court, so I just look at the word court, it actually means, but the judgment shall be seated. That's right. The judgment shall be seated. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy forever. Then the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms, and, and I just checked, and this is not a right translation. Look at this. And the greatness of the kingdoms under the heavens. So this talks about the dimensions. So the kingdoms, look at this. And the greatness of the kingdoms and the dimensions shall be given to the people. I think that's what's happening right now. To the saints of the Most High, for his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve him and obey him. Okay. So now I feel Jesus as a son of man, and I realize this week that we are now, we now are in the court. We are in that court. This is the first time I felt that it was this week, and right now we're in that court. And I don't know where we're going from now, from here, but uh, this is the first time I've been aware this week of being in the court. And this, this is a different court than what we've been before. This is not Mount Zion. This is not the council. I don't think this is a court I've ever been to before. I believe this is the court of Daniel 7. And so we're with the ancient days, and we're with the Son of Man. <laughs> um, Brian? Brian, I think that uh, we need to do a worship. Can we find a worship song for us? That's hard, isn't it? I can bring up one of Jacqueline's songs, but those aren't. Or, or, yeah, but anything right that's there. copyrighted is very difficult. Do you, have, do you do something a cappella, Karen? Can you lead us in a worship song? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. I think Karen can do that. She usually has a guitar. Thank you, Brian. I think we just need to worship the Lord right now. And Lord, we just come before you. And Lord... Um, <coughs> We do not know what to say. We do not know why you have brought us here, why we are now in this court mm -hmm. uh, before the Ancient of Days. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord oh, God Lord. Almighty. Holy are you, Ancient of Days, mm -hmm. Son of Man, the unique, the only, the one, one and only begotten Son of God. There is no other Son of God like you. All the others are imposters. They're phonies. They've caused wreckage and ruin to your, to your creation. We acknowledge you. We praise you. We exalt you. Praise your name. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, Holy, Holy. holy.
But I feel um, I feel multitudes of angels participating. And it's like I can feel the thousands upon thousands mm. Mm. in worship before the Ancient of Days. <coughs> it says, and books were open. <coughs> Let's get the phrase, and books were open. And I, I, I wonder right now, the Lord wants to, oh. if, if a book needs to be open. It says, and the books were open. Yeah, I feel the elders. Raylene, do you want to <coughs> you get the, the mic, mic with the black tip on it? And stand there. No pressure, but yeah. I think right in the middle, the, there's a whirlwind there that Deborah saw. <coughs> I, I feel like the Lord wants to give you a book. I could be wrong. Well, something just came. Hey. Felt that. <coughs> okay, Sue is saying, I feel a lot of pressure on the top of my head. Yeah, that's how I can tell that uh, we're either uh, on Mount Zion, where the council of the Lord, or the court. So when I said the word court, <coughs> so I, I get a hit. So I think we're in the court. Um, PETA, hi PETA. Uh, PETA's Native American from uh, Canada. I'm feeling a uh, gravity business uh, seriousness. My heart is being faster, and it feels like that type of nervousness when you're going to take a test or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me, that was just 8 o'clock. Um, Deborah writes, I see royal beings. I also see a white sphere grid like forming. Uh, and Deborah, says, she sees the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. Uh, Deborah, can I get you on the video also? Yeah, I'm seeing robots. I'd love for you to describe the yeah. scene. What you're seeing. She's good to go. Okay, thank you. Hi, Deborah. Okay, here she comes. <coughs> Hi, Deborah. Hi. Hi. Can, can you, you can you describe? Fine, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, can you describe what you're seeing as the uh, as the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man and the what's the what's the courtroom look like? Are you seeing that? Um. I just see the two beings right now. I don't really see what the courtroom looks like. Okay. Um, they mm. have, I, I don't always see like what Michelle sees, but I saw them when you first started talking about them. Okay. And they were on either side of you. And I didn't know what they were, but I saw two of them and they have like brocade, um, rich. <coughs> so. Uh, so the Son of Man, hey. I feel here, so this must be the Ancient of Days. Mm. I've never discerned the Father before. Mm. Oh, this is the Ancient of Days. Mm. Oh. Mm. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, Aaron, I keep hearing court is now in session. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh wow, That's there's anointing when you said mm -hmm. that. Yeah, this is why I feel the throne. Mm -hmm. Oh, throne. Yes. It's the throne. The throne is <coughs> yeah. in front of us. It's right. <coughs> it's right okay, so Rayleigh. Rayleigh, what are you seeing and hearing? There's a throne in front of us, and it's huge. It's There's no, I can't see the top of it. Um, that is so high and lifted up. Oh, when you said high and lifted up? This is the highest court. Oh, wow. <coughs> I think that's true. <coughs> The Ancient of Days opens the ancient books. Mm. Books that were not written with human hands. Mm. Oh, what is happening now? Okay, so, something is... 
happening. We're moving, we're like moving deeper into the Father. Well, like deeper into his heart. Heart, We're moving the heart of the heart. issue. <coughs> it's the heart of the issue. The issue that's before the, the court. The oh! And it has become an issue for the Father's heart. <coughs> There's a tempest that's been formed. And it comes to divide. Oh, that's truth. Yeah. Remember, anytime words are given, you're always a judging, and Raylene's used to this, but so we're testing to make sure this is anointing Whoa. on this is what the Father is saying. And it's, there's it's, tremendous it's, anointing. And I started to feel that seriousness. Um, what's another word for it? It's righteous, righteous indignation. It's indignation, but there's a, a holiness, reverence. a reverence, reverence. Reverence. It's a reverence. An awe. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yes. Mm. Oh. Whoa. What had to happen? He stood up. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. He stood up. Hey. He will not sit any longer. Oh my. Mm. Mm. Whoa. There's, it's, it's like fires coming out of his nostrils. It's like there's fire. Whoa. Whoa. <coughs> Feels like it too. Whoa. It does, doesn't it? You feel the heat, the fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like you're in front of a blowtorch or torches. Wow. Okay, hand and God, I'll stand the quarters in session, so I think we should do that. Mm -hmm. And at the, I heard that we are brought before the court to advance our position in Christ. Yes, right. Oh, he liked it when we stood. Oh, it's like spinning now. We're in the whirlwind. <coughs> like a centrifugal force. That you Did mm -hmm. anybody else get something in your hand? I feel like I had there's something in my hands. Yeah. I do too. Mm -hmm. But it's warm. But there's, there's, there's like two. Ooh. Whoa. What do you see? Heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Can anybody see what's in our hands? Be sure to be on the mic, incidentally. Find one near you. There's something. I had seen a fireball earlier before she said fire. It was oh, coming toward us. Okay, keep the mic. Yeah, there you go. I had seen a fireball earlier, and it was coming toward us. Before she said, before she said are fire. Are we holding books? Uh, it's, oh, wait, it's, are we all holding books? It's it's like a weight and measure. Oh, oh, it's a scale. It's, it's a weight and measure. It's a yes. scale. It, yes. That, yeah. Go Justice. Ahead, put, Justice. Be sure to put up all the way to your chin. Go ahead. And I'll add in just uh, knowledge to this. Always, I don't know if anybody's had this before, but with judgment is always redemption, and we haven't always seen it that way because there's heavenly scales and there's earthly scales. Mm -hmm. And that's why the shift has come. We're mm -hmm. in the, that's why we're in the highest courtroom, because those are the, the <coughs> heavenly scales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the scale here. It's like we're holding the two um, yes. hands mm -hmm. of a scale. Yes, I feel the scale. Whoa! Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, I don't know what to do with that. Whoa. Um, Aaron said here that I've been given gravels. Gavels, not gravels. Paul, I can't yeah. help but think of the first title of your, of your um, pamphlets, Tipping. Oh, Tipping the Scale, which is, which is on Curses and Blessings. Paul, I heard the word divine shift. Okay, you need to be on the mic, my friends. 
Here, here's a, here's it. There you go. I here's heard. Oh, sorry. I heard. Go ahead. Is it on? Yep. I heard the word divine shift right before you said the scales. Mm. Hey, what what's up here? Did I put right here. Armature. The, is that the? Oh, that's the armature. Is it? Yeah. It feels like it. Yeah, and it, it holds the. That holds the two pails, or uh, I'm surprised even what are they called? What are they called? The hands. Thank you. Mm. Oh, okay. Now there's anointing coming. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm hearing justice is not blind, and neither is your God. Okay, Sharon Louise, I have a dagger in my left hand and a small book in my right hand. A dagger executes judgment. The book is the law and based on which judgment is made. Andrew, hi, Andrew. Uh, seeing a crown on my head. And what might be stones of fire like jewels, crown might equal anointing to judge and rule with him. <clears throat> I see a crown. There's crowns, but they have eyes on them. They have eyes on them? Eyes. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Crowns have eyes. Okay, now the map is like fingers going off and evangelism fingers going off. Mm -hmm. Oh, both evangelism fingers are going off. There's something about evangelism in this. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, what I can see is, you know, when you approach into the, into the courtroom, and I can see a huge brown, like if, you were, if we were small and we were appro approaching the judge, and it's the Lord, and I see this huge, thick, white book that's opened, and the Father's finger, and he's saying everything that has taken place from the very second, oh. the moment that we were born and brought into this earth, that he has it in here, in here, and he knows it, and that there is recompense that will come, even for all the injustice, the things that have been done, good or bad, and, and we think that he doesn't see nor notice them. But in that book, and imagine for the entire earth, the entire world, and he knows each second of each moment of every person's life, and he's saying that nothing has passed from his mind, from his eyes, from his ears, from his heart, that he's going to cause the recompense to come when he says this is the reason why he brought us into this courtroom because it's now time for him to execute Whoa, his judgment on the on earth that. for the things that have been done in secret <clears throat> things that have been done where we didn't even say anything or we didn't even do anything he says but now i step forward Whoa. and i say i'm gonna handle this and i'm gonna take care of this for there is many things in this room that have been stolen that have been lost that have been unrightfully taken away now i see keys I see keys that were taken from some of us. And the Lord says, now I'm going to give you a bigger key ring with more keys. And now he's saying, take the keys that I give to you and open the door and enter into that new room. Now, as I take care of this, which happened back here, the judgment, he says, don't look back, but walk forward into this new place where you had to go and you had to speak and you had to say and do something. You don't have to do that. Go into this next room with that key and now partake and, and take hold of what is in these new places. Well, I think that prophetically when you do that, so where we receive these keys, yes. where we open up all these places, yes, Lord. and where we step in. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jana, you have something? I, I do. I'm just looking at this word. And I, I think we can sit down. The Lord. She has a mic. The Lord led me to the scripture in Romans 13. Yeah. And this is talking about the natural, but it's just a pattern of what heavenly protocol is. And I remember feeling all these rulers, you know, uh -huh. the last couple of weeks. And then my rod has been going off, which I haven't felt in a long time. The authority is being at another level that I haven't, I don't think we've experienced. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do what to have, do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good, but it is you, if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it, where am I? Yeah, 
I'm in Romans 13. Okay, Romans 13. 3. Let me try this again. Okay, verse 3. Okay. Verse 3. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Okay. <laughs> do you want to do, do you want not to have fear of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it does not bear the sword. Oh. For nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. And I just think we're in, that <clears throat> is what the Lord is wanting to resurrect a righteous authority yes. in us that we would wear the unperishable to actually stand in his eminence and produce that judgment for justice. Okay, we, um, we have been joined by some angels, and they appear to be, uh, so I, I don't see yet, but I feel, they appear to, appear to be very large angels. Mm. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Did you Hallelujah. have something? Do, uh, okay, you got to go on the mic. I do. I do. She has, she's going to look up the uh, scripture, but what I do is I have, you guys can judge this. This is just knowledge, and I, and I don't know if it's going to be a revelation to you. But Paul, this is uh, what I, I just sense. It's an okay. impression. It's an impression. There's, there's earthly ministers, yes. and there's heavenly. Yes. And when we go up, and, and, and when, he, when we saw the Lord stand up, Okay. The father. He, the father had mm. to stand up because this is the time. We've had the move of Jesus. Mm. We've had the move of the Holy Spirit, but the father's coming now. He had to stand up for the things that were done in the secret places and the, peop and the things that people are mm. claiming in the secret places. Okay. There, One of them is there love. There is very strong anointing on that. Mm -hmm. The father is love. No. Yes, sir. One of them is people are claiming love, oh, I see. but then they judge. Mm -hmm. So this goes back to what you were saying about... Um, the, was it if I got the word right? The, say that word Ephraim or Rephraim? Rephraim, yeah. And this R mixture that's yeah. going on within humanity. Yeah. But he said, How would you know who my people are by, by love? And we're, we're finding a hard time. So, with this judgment that's coming, which we always have to remember in our minds, redemption's in that. That's how he redeems. That's why there's love. evangelism. That's mm -hmm. why there's evangelism. Yes. So, with this, as I'm saying, is. Another thing is to get, when we're getting up into the heavenly places, in other words, ascending and coming back down, we're to establish things, okay? But we have another problem because he says heaven lives within us. That's right. And some of the time frames that you're talking about, say predestination now, is all these things are parallel and we're releasing. So what you had right now, Paul, about something that you were sensing about the white horse and Jesus on it, that's something that was within you and you released it. So when you speak, you'll either have to discern or somebody else because you're also releasing it. And then other people through love and letting the Holy Spirit operate yes. will accept it and then it will expand. There you go. Okay, and like what you just said, look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew thirteen thirty six. That's awesome. <clears> then <throat> Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, which I would say are the sons oh, of God. God. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one, or I would say the fallen sons of God, mm -hmm. the Nephilim and Rephraim. The enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Oh, are we discerning the reapers? Keep reading in that. I think we're discerning the reapers. I think has a father just released the reapers. The tempest. Tempest, yeah. It was a tempest of judgment. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, which are the fallen sons of God, right. which have been intermingled now With into humanity, humanity. Right. and will cast them into the furnace of fire, that will be wailing gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine forth as the sun, which is now the the kingdom is being given 
to mm -hmm. the saints, uh, as forth the Son and the kingdom of the Father, he was in the kingdom of the Father. He has an ear to hear, let him hear. Hmm. Okay, uh, wow. Jana? One of these angels has stepped forward and I think has a message so right there, I think. She has a mic. Also, something's happened with our arms. Okay, you need to get... oh. From our shoulders all the way down the front of our arms, and it's like a, it's a spiritual strength. That's okay, I, I, feel, I feel a sash here. Yeah. It goes over so my bring... shoulder. It comes down like this. Uh -huh. so I don't, uh, Aaron, I'm hearing these large angels are centurion angels. <gasps> so they'd be angels. Yeah, they, Aaron, they feel bigger. Yeah, so they would have a hundred under them. Uh, yes. You need to put your. I apologize. It needs to be turned on. There's a switch oh, on it. Mine. You need to flip there you up. go. Okay. Uh, when you spoke earlier about the um, about the new authority oh. being released, uh -huh. I saw an armor. It was like a scaled armor. It was coming down over your shoulders. You got to keep the mic at your mouth. Thank it you. was coming on over the shoulders. So the so this armor was an authority as well. Oh. oh. I apologize, but no one can hear you. Um, Either on the the, tele the broadcast or the um, tape, unless. Okay, Jenna. Uh, so Justin, are you still with us? Justin's still on, Brian. Yes. Okay, good. So, let Justin do the typing. <clears throat> Thank you, Justin, very much. Oh. Okay, now I feel fire with this angel. Mm -hmm. It's getting hotter. Mm -hmm. I feel an angel right here. I feel the pressure here. And there's extra pressure which tells me it's a message. Oh. And there's like fire swirling around, I think. Hey. 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 Yahweh. Oh. Oh. Hmm. These two testify the witness of the old and the new for true righteousness is resurrection power through you. Hmm. <clears throat> You must be of the righteous resurrection. For why will you look for the living among the dead? Oh. <coughs> there you go. The same spirit that raised him up lives in you. Whoa. <coughs> Let the enemy know dread. Yes. 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 I agree with that. <sighs> For the imperishable is light, an armor that is true. Its eminence is the kingdom, birthing through you. This is even the hour, the time to be awake, to know those who labor among you. For those who have come through the gate. You must be yoked with the firstborn among the dead. You must have come by water and blood. For he is the head. And these three testify. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And in your humanity, 
His tabernacle is among men. Whoa. Whoa. <coughs> There's a corporate alliance, the unity not yet known, both heaven and earth is the church of the firstborn. Oh. So put on the armor of light and do the works of the day. For night is upon you. For many will be slain. Mm. Oh my. I'm having a vision. I've never seen this before. But it's an army of youth. They're so little. <coughs> And they're running in droves across fields, upon the walls, through the windows. That's Joel. There's so many. And the garden is before them. <coughs> and what behind them lays waste. <sighs> and it's going on. I Jen, I'm wondering, and that's why I feel I feel like I felt like a donut. Like there was this, there's someone in the center, and then I, I think I feel all the youth. Keep keep on sharing what you're getting. And I think this I think this is the army of youth. There's, it feels like there's thousands and thousands of them, but they're around Jesus. Yes. Oh, there's, Jesus there's is in the center. There's only one at the head. There's only one at the head. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. now there's more coming. There's more. Let these come unto me, for the kingdom of heaven is made up of such as these. Mm. I have a sense that this is the, uh, the phrase that Jill Austin used to use, the clash of kingdoms. Yes. It's like, it's like these ho the hordes of evil are coming out from the place of the dead. And but they're running the upon Lord, them. But, but the Lord is releasing his children. Wow. And the cloud of witnesses <coughs> with them. And even now, the sons of righteousness, the, the living among the dead, are training up these, these ones. For this hour. And secrets are being unleashed. And in their sleep, they're imparted. And the young are dream dreams, and the old too. But these two testify the old and the new. They carry the living word. And the word has power. And it's the word that is flesh. This word from heaven. I, I saw, I can, 
say. I can't ex I, describe it. I was trying to describe what I'm feeling. Have you ever seen Mecca where they have the Kaaba, the, the black stone in the center, and this mass of humanity that rotates around it? <sighs> this is Jesus at the center, and there's this mass of humanity. The, but the children, I think they're children, they're children youth. And it, it's, it's that dense, and it's moving. It's like a wheel moving around Jesus, and he's at the center of the head. <clears throat> oh. Whoa. Here comes a new fire. Whew. Okay, Deborah uh, oh. sees uh, the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man uh, dressed in brocaded robes, gold thread woven into a heavenly purple purple and shiny white robe for the ancient days, same gold thread woven in a heavenly blue and shiny white for the Son of Man. <clears throat> See, too, they are both very tall. The ancient days is taller. Ancient days has a long white beard, an amazing crown filled with gems that are indescribable in earthly terms. Lightning shoots out from his crown, hands and feet. He stands a little one step back from the ancient of days. Um, lightning shoots out. Okay, I think I already read that, so that's a repeat. Yep. Um, I can hear that <laughs> the Holy Spirit saying, <coughs> see your anointing. See your anointing. And it's the same principle of how the Ancient of Days, how he, how he created. He spoke and he created. He created the earth. And he's saying, through the seer, anoint, uh, through the seer anointing, of bringing heaven to earth. He's saying when you see and you speak and you create, he says, in our valley, because he lives on the inside of us, we can speak and we have that anointing to create and set something up. So you've be been listening to Jana last year? Because <laughs> Jana has had this bee in her bonnet. <laughs> To, so. to, he's, he's saying to be able, in other words, to speak it out, establish it, and even that he mm. says, when you see, you can see it, it's the, see, it's the seer anointing to create and then to walk into it. And then also what I could hear is that, that there is a new breed that is being raised up. Mm. And God is using you as one to uncover the no, enemy. No, no, no. The enemy has been disguised. And there's like a Disclosure. layer that has been over the earth, wow. like a veil. And the enemy has been walking the earth in a disguise. And he's being unveiled. He's been walking. He's the angel of light that's walking. Whoa, I'm still there. But that through those that are laying down their life in that way, through that seer anointing, they're preparing for the generation that she was talking about, oh. that they're going to come back. How it talks about the remnant, and a remnant means the same as the beginning of the bolt, like a bolt of fabric. Oh. Wow, that's good. And so that's what this generation, where like the waters have become so muddy because of all the things that have taken place, mm -hmm. that that's how this youth, this remnant, will be with the Lord. Mm. Okay, so uh, Raylene, mm. so I have a scroll in my mouth. Okay, Raylene. <laughs> Whoa, something oh. prophetic about my breath. <coughs> Whoa. So, so I'll, whoa. So I'll give you the scroll. Whoa, <laughs> it's anointed. <coughs> whoa. Oh, that's a buzz. <coughs> whoa. Oh. Whoa. What's on this scroll. You look close to your mouth. <coughs> what's on this scroll is innumerable names. Mm. I see names. And then the names and on them the blood of the <laughs> unborn children of the aborted. Oh, well, that's true, Raylene. And they are making up a cloud of witness. Yeah. That's true, Raylene. That is. That are in one accord with one voice. 
speaking to the generation to come up now. They didn't get a chance. Oh, Raylene, this is true. So true. But they are speaking to, to the again. children. They are speaking to little minds, little ones. Jesus. And they're calling them with one voice. Fear went through me. I mean, six oh. and under. Those six and under are the ones that are coming up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they're calling, they're calling, they're calling. All of these names. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The spilled blood. But they're calling in power to the generation that is. Yes. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. There's an anointing on that. And they're saying, come on, come up, stand up, be bold. There is no age limit. You are mighty. That's what they're saying. You are mighty. The time of political correctness is over. Amen. Oh. And this one voice speaks with great joy. They were not given a voice, but now their voice rings out. Hey, Brian? <clears throat> I posted it on the screen. Oh, my head. Okay. Uh, Aaron sees on color holographic books, visions are going to another dimension, new vision being released. And you see something like holographic uh, film being drawn out of people's heads. This is going to be a replaced by something like holographic books. Mm. Okay, and you got something? <clears throat> I think it just got something to put the understanding together why we're having such a hard time down here. Um, I mean, on Earth, okay? Cause yes. We can ascend, and a lot of people don't realize that, so you got the mixture. And it's because the cup of iniquity is being filled and we're either going to come out of that by stepping into the realm that God's given us and let him judge us not ourselves not other people so he's saying be be the free son of God that's right okay the next thing is he's saying with what you're getting Paul is you are releasing and he's going to ask you to stand into a place because if you don't stand in and let him be your God in that new area which is an unknown area and Satan wants to pull you back and wear you out. Or let's don't use Satan. Let's say the host of dark, the other no, kingdom. You're not the Satan. only person who said that to me. <laughs> so. Well, <laughs> is that picture shining? Uh, let's take a uh, little brief break here. So I'm trying to um, discern what's going on. So we're not in the court anymore, but I still feel the Son of Man. So this is the fun part of my job, <clears throat> trying to decide and discern where we're going next. Okay, we've, uh, we've gone to the council of the Lord now. That's a funny term. I feel like we're taking what we've just received and it's going to be adjudicated in the council. Can anybody look at the word adjudicated? <clears throat> I, like it. I like that word. That's a nice mean, word. But I like it. I spell. Adjudicate. A J. A D J. A D J. Thank you. That's why I have spell check. Oh, it's a J U. Adjudicated. Talk to us while we're away. Well, she's going to probably get a better um, meaning, but really what it means is what it was established in a court is now going to be carried out. And basically what we are doing, and I don't know. We should we're in the probably, council. We're in the council of the Lord. It's been done in heaven. Yeah. Now we're going to bring it down here within ourselves and release no, this it. Is, this, well, yeah, we're still in the council in heaven, though. Right. So we're in a different place. Mm. And the elders. Okay. Well, adjud adjud adjudicated. I think adjudicated part, but that, that would be established. So 
Uh, but Jenna? Ask, ask for a request earnestly. It means to bid, beseech, entreat, press, conjure, command solemnly. So adjudicate it. I didn't find exactly on will, though. Okay, so go ahead. <coughs> yeah, I'm saying that means whatever was happening in heaven, we do that. He'll have us bring it back down because that's where the co-laboring is with him. And, and this is with the cloud of witnesses and with the saints. Mm -hmm. There's something about what, so now I'm feeling the saints. Spirit so, of righteous made perfect. Yeah, so if you go to Hebrews chapter 12. 12. That's your 10. Oh, there's a lot of words. <laughs> Ooh. <coughs> In fact, go to the end of chapter 11. Oh, I feel that. I haven't read it yet. Talk about the saints. And all these having obtained, this is 1239. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. This is what you were talking about with the aborted babies. Mm -hmm. That even they now have a voice. And, so, and we will not finish what we're supposed to do without them. <clears throat> I feel that's true. What, is it, what was unfinished is being imparted to this generation. Yeah. And in the council, they're, they're cheering. Yes, they are. So what, what are you getting? Uh, you need to... You know, I really feel like they're, it's like a rabble. They're, uh, like, you know, they're excited. hitting, yeah, they're excited, <coughs> but there's, they're hitting their, their staffs, their rods, and they're, they're singing oh. a praise, but it's a cheer. It's a, it's a, it has a melody. Cheering. What it, are, are you willing, uh, this is, Prophetic. Here, try to hear and sing what they're get. They're singing. It's not your first rodeo. Oh, you know what? This this is the saints singing a new song. Oh. This is the saints are singing a new song. Mm -hmm. So be released to. Uh... Well, what I heard was Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Our lives are gonna be restored. We've waited so long to hear well, so A people it. in earth will hear The joy of the Lord is our strength He's coming to release that strength Joy unspeakable Whoa. and full of glory <clears throat> Half that's ever let been told there is a people who will tell the story of a God of old. Oh. The ancient of days is rising again. Oh. He's coming with fire in his eyes. Oh. And he will restore the people of God again. And I'll remove all the lies he sweep away the refuge of lies with an overflowing scourge and his broom of destruction will come and the lord of hosts will hear the sound of rejoicing in the heavens and in the earth for the grain will rise up and the harvest will come oh my. and the people will love First love has come. Oh, that was a word for the Lord. <laughs> and for the people of God. Oh, my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
Okay, Brian Felt. Brian Felt adjudicates to pronounce or decree by judicial sentence. So I think that's what we went to the council to do. So we yeah. took we took what was done in the court and went to the council. Um, Deborah says, I see them marching in, marching in, dancing upon injustice. Yes. Oh, that's strong. Oh. That's upon injustice is strong. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I, the Lord is saying that there is a preparation of people with eyes to see and ears to hear being prepared for the age to come. Whoa. But they're here being prepared now what that seer anointing to, to be able to see into these things that we're seeing to bring them here that it goes beyond than what is taking place in the four walls of the church that that is not that's not the fullness of the preparation that's right it's the preparation of the age <coughs> to come how he intended <coughs> for the kingdom of god to rule and reign yes. in the earth and he's saying that he's 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 okay he's bringing it down He's bringing it down. I can sense him bringing it down. I over can feel it bringing it down. Upon our heads. Laying it. Laying it over us, over our heads. Now on our shoulders. On our back. It is, isn't it? And he says, wear it. Wear the, the, the royal robe. The royal priesthood stand in the position of the priesthood, he says, there's many, 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 many more. Many more. Many more that are they're, they're searching and they're seeking. They've been going here and there. They've been going to church years, years in out, doing the same thing, doing ministry and saying, no, this is not it. This is not it. Many more. And the Lord says, stand in that position of the royal priesthood, wearing that royal robe, standing in that place of intercession, standing in the gap. I want to read to you a word that Stacy Campbell gave. I was actually, um, I think it was 2000, I want to say seven. Yeah, 2007. Oh my, <coughs> oh my. <coughs> January the 2nd, 2007, Maricopa, Arizona. Uh, Patricia King invited a bunch of us to come uh, for the beginning of the new that year. That was so powerful. <laughs> <coughs> And what remind me is, um, you know, I, I grew up as a Southern Baptist. I became a Christian, actually, at an American Baptist church in, in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, moved to uh, Oceanside, rejoined the Southern Baptist church. Rejoined, <coughs> excuse me, an American Baptist church when I was in college. And um, where was I going with that? Anyway, uh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so now, so I've, I've been in the church, and and then I pastored for almost uh, almost twenty years, and uh, and the Lord took me out of that, and and has not allowed me to go back, and and I'm not. I have many friends who are pastors. My best friend outside of my family is uh, Rob Gross, and he pastors the Southern Baptist Church, and I love the man, and I, and I would attend that church. But <clears throat> I, 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 I was mourning. <clears throat> my, my wife and I have mourned this, because this was our world. You understand that, that uh, I was pastor, she was the pastor's wife, and, and th this was our world, and, and uh, I, I had such guilt when I stopped attending. Somebody said they stopped attending the building. And I'm not against the church. Please do not. I know this is being recorded, and I, I am not against the church. I just, the Lord has me on this unique journey that I never, ever believed I'd be on. <clears throat> but that day I was at the Ontario airport getting ready to fly to, um, to Arizona. And I looked out, and I, and I said to the Lord, Lord, I know what I've come from, but what am I going to? And, and I, I, I have to say I felt so, I felt so lost. And uh, the Lord has now surrounded us with wonderful people, and we have a community. And my church now is on Thursday nights with a youth group. That is my, I, so now I feel like I, at least I'm going to church. And, but that's my church. And uh, so I, my son and I, we lead the group together. And uh, 
<clears throat> but Stacy Campbell at that meeting had this word. And the Lord had just given us the revelation of the elemental spirits and the, and the right. element and the um, stokia, which are the the living stones. So we we had just come from a school, and I think that was in November, somewhere around in the fall of um, 06. And so we had writ written a prayer called "Prayer to Release the Living Stones." So I, here's the word, and <clears throat> I remembered it when you said this. And when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, all the structures, they broke down. They came down, falling down. It literally fell down, first in his body, then in the natural in 70 A.D. Everything they knew came down because we are living stones. Living stones, living stones. The life is not in the form. The life is in the stone. The DNA is in the brick. God is building his church, and the final revelation of the church in heaven is not even the bride, it is a city. A city made of stones, and a light comes out of the stones to all the nations. And all the stones come around the temple, and God is the temple in the middle of the stones. The Lamb is the temple, and the Lamb is the light. Mm -hmm. There is no light but the temple in the middle of the stones, the living stones. There is a great transformation coming, going on in the body of Christ and the globe. And the forms and the structures, they're coming down, from the old wineskin, a new wineskin is being built, but it's very hard to discern. So this is now six years ago. Mm -hmm. The people are looking for it saying, is this it, is this it, is this the Christ, is this the one, is this the form, is this the structure? And all of the earth are looking for the form that can contain the presence of God. But what is coming, the harvest that is coming is so big, it cannot be contained in a structure. Even as the first structure was completely destroyed, so that new stone was not left upon another. The church, as you know it now, it will never be the same. And this is the key. The life is in the bricks. Living stones, they're alive, they're alive. They're alive, they're alive. They contain his spirit. So the key is not to discern the form, but the key is to discern the brick. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you in God? Have you ever seen Stacy Campbell? She goes, <laughs> like that. <laughs> It comes from God, and to God it shall return, and shall surround his presence forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in heaven. Whatever you discern the form, without discerning the stone, you'll have a temporary structure, and that will not last. But what, whenever you discern the stone, aha, aha, I see that stone, I know that stone, that's the apostolic stone, that's the prophet stone, that's the healing stone. Are you beginning to let the old stones go with the young stones, the male stones go away, side by wow, side with the female stones? Joel 2, oh my. which is what mm -hmm. you got, jo and Acts 2, it's coming again, it's coming again, and when you discern the stone correctly, you can build a multiplicity of containers that contain less, that are less, they hold life, they hold the living, flowing in the presence of God. Wow. There will be a multiplicity of containers, but the stones are going to turn eternal stones, a city that is a bride, a new Jerusalem, the holy city like the bride. When you discern the stones, you'll put those living stones that contain life together with other living stones that contain life, and they will build a container. And I would say this is that. Yeah. Yeah. We're all from different buildings, yeah. right? right? That contain life, and they will bring a container for the times to house the presence of God. But if you only have a form, it's too small, it's too small, it's too small, it's merely a structure. It's, it is too small, it will never be able to contain what God is about to do on the earth in terms of harvest, a harvest of billions. Wow. There is a harvest coming that is so big, millions and millions and millions, yea, a billion souls harvest that will need stone joined with stone, joined with stone, united and not divided, discerning the life of the brick, the jagged stone. So you see, I do not know you. But I could discern you. Mm -hmm. the, I could discern know the stone. Those, know those who labor among See, I, I did not need to wait for you to go through uh, class 101 and class 102 and class yes. 103 before you are released because the entire time I am judging you and you, and you can be assured I would have stopped you <clears throat> if I felt that you were off track. Now, besides, I have these two ladies next to me and they're discerning you too. But you see, we are discerning the stone because... This is the container now. And so we come together, and we come together as the people of God, and, and the Lord has taught us 
painfully, painfully, how to judge the stone. Build your church, Lord Jesus. Build a church that the gates of hell will not, will not stand prevail. against. Amen. And you see, we are now going past the fivefold ministry. Because in that passage it says, and the fivefold will come till the unity, the unity comes. Yeah. And see, and what we have seen here is very interesting. I have not been with Karen for years. And Karen, the Lord brings you at the right time. Always. See, and the Lord brought, I have never met you before, the Lord brought you at the right time. You see, because, because it's not that we're, we're trying to build something. We're trying to build his kingdom. And so he brings his kingdom people together when he wants to get his kingdom work done, right? And I may never see you all again. But it doesn't matter because this is about his kingdom. It's not about my kingdom. It's about his kingdom. And I honor you because you have come at the right time. And I, I love you. But you see, but you see, I recognize the gift in you. And, the, and I recognize the gifts in you. Mm-hmm. And Father, this has been a joy tonight. Yes, Lord. To be with your people, to be with the people online. Yeah. And Lord, we just we want to. We want to be wise. And we want only what you have to say and not what flesh has to say or what the enemy has to say. Lord, I thank you for what you built tonight, that you built something tonight for now. Yes, Lord. And we know that next time it's going to be different. That's right, Lord. But Lord, we appreciate and love what you did now. And for the gifting that you have online, the gifts that you have here, for the way that we can discern together what you are doing. Mm-hmm. And we bless, we bless you, Ancient of Days. We oh, praise you, Ancient Lord. of Days. Hallelujah. We praise you, Son of Man, Son of God. Holy Jesus, of the Christ, worthy, worthy. the Anointed One, mm-hmm. the Anointed One, mm-hmm. and Holy Spirit. We recognize that you are a person mm-hmm. and that you have been caged and chained. Mm-hmm. And we declare again that you are released to do what you want to do. In his name we say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Do you want to find me? Come through the open door